Fantastic. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Shiatsu therapists all over the world. Another week, another episode, another great guest, and one of my favorites, uh, a returning guest, Ivan Bell. Ivan, hello. Hi, Mikhail. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good, good, good. Well, thanks for joining us. I know you just uh, were in Italy, in Milano. Uh, doing a workshop. Uh, Ivan is the creator of Rio Shiatsu. For those of you who, am I pronouncing it correctly? Ivan? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if if you don't know, uh, is one of the our greatest uh, journalists, and uh, has a, a website which I will post with great great interviews uh, with teachers uh, and Shiatsu masters from. Uh, past and present and great articles and great insights so i highly mm -hmm. recommend you go on his website and today's uh episode is all about uh you know the reality of key so i don't know what that means but you you will tell me <laughs> you know key uh she had to you know people always ask us right uh is this energy work you know i hear that frequently like what is this it, it it feels like a a massage but there's something more here you know I, mm -hmm. I don't preface it when people come to see me I don't preface it you know I, I do energy work and and this is what we're gonna do I don't even talk about energy uh but as 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 many of you can uh, attribute you know once we start to work with people many of our clients start to feel something more than just this type of body work uh, and some of them feel it so greatly uh, they're, they're quite moved by it so so they always say well what is this what is this what are you doing what am i feeling why is it moving here why is it moving there so this mystery of chi uh, that we all are so familiar with but many people uh, for them it's a it's a mystical experience you know uh that's always, uh, in a way, the the mystery. How do we explain uh, to our clients uh, that there is such a reality or an existence of energy? Uh, just about that, Mikhail, let me start this uh, conversation by just a memory. Uh, when I went to Senegal, uh, we had <clears throat> a little mission and we were treating people with shiatsu in a hospital. It was a countryside hospital, but in a small town with um, a school for doctors, nurses, and different kind of um, professions like that. And at one point, there were an old man under my hands, and suddenly he told me, Do you know who I am? I said, No, I don't know. I am the anatomy teacher here at the university. I say, wow, fantastic. So please tell me something. Why, when you're pressuring my, um, my feet, I can feel something in my liver? And I was so amazed that this guy was able to connect between liver two and three and his proper liver in, in the belly. And he, I was so astonished that I say, I want you to be my anatomy teacher. <laughs> so yeah, for everybody, it's uh, always a surprise to feel this kind of thing. It's not always obvious, but sometimes it, some people who are really well connected can feel the movement in it and sometimes to associate with the proper organ. It's really interesting for sure. So this question about key, or oh, chi is a wide and large question. It's, that's the big question. What is it about? Um, before explaining my point of view on that sub subject, I will tell that um, at the beginning, uh, when I was a martial artist, I uh, was not really interesting. In, in fact, I was more interesting in putting my opponent KO uh, but not about this thing. But uh, you, as you know, I've been trained also. I did some studies for five years at university in Chinese language. And so 
when I was younger, I had my backpack and was uh, working all around China. <clears throat> and I saw a lot of really surprising, let's say like that, surprising things. And especially during market days, when I was, um, in a, you know, inside the country, not on the, on the seashore, I mean, not on the coast, because the, the country here is well developed and they live like us more or less. But in a land, <clears throat> you can still see people who are on their daily routine and going to the market and things like that. And I saw a lot of different things. I will tell you just two stories. One of them was a, a guy saying, thanks to my Qigong, I'm able to break things, to do smokes with my fingers. So he was like this and smelling. And no smoke at all. So everybody started to laugh. And I was <laughs> I was laughing like everybody. In fact, <clears throat> and he, immediately after that, he said, but now I'm going to break this big stone from the river. So you, I don't know how to say in English, but the, the stones river, you know, the, the river rock. rock. River yeah. rock, yeah. River rock. And just with three fingers like that, and at that distance, it did that, and the stone exploded. Incredible. I was a bit amazed, and as, but still doubting. And immediately the guy, and I say here in the assistance that some people, doesn't believe me, don't believe me. So I say, yes, me. <laughs> okay, so the stream was just close by. He told me, just go and grab a rock there and come back. So I immediately go in the river, took a big stone, give him completely wet to him, and he did the same, tag, bomb. That's one of the story. And he started to scratch my head saying, what is it about? I don't understand what is going on. Another time, it was uh, someone who was doing also some, it, it's still in the market day. Um, it was a watermelon market, a big watermelon everywhere. And um, in, in the street, the people, you know, were coming with empty bags and coming with full bags. And on the side, there were a lot of little um, shops, especially small cafe. And one old man, all dressed in blue, you know, with a Mao style, the, the, the baseball cap, but it's not a baseball cap, the Mao cap, and yeah. very old man. And he was laughing and laughing and suddenly agitating his hands like, like this. And you, can, you could see some people in the street start to walk straight and suddenly doing this movement and straight again. So, I came close to him, I saw him start to talk with him because I was at that time able to speak fluently Chinese. I say, hey, old man, what are you doing? I've noticed that you are moving your hands, doing things. And he was laughing like a kid. I say, hey, look, it's so funny. Just sit and have a tea with me and I will show you. And he start to tell me, you see this old woman there? Hmm, I'm connecting you with my chi. And and the lady just go on the left, on the right, without noticing, like if you had an imbalance. And my many travels in China just wake me up about this chi, and I started to wonder what is it about, how it works, and so on. Um, some acupuncturists in China show me a, a few things too, but in Europe, and I was practicing a lot of, especially Aikido, and in Aikido, as you know, there is this word, ki. So yes. I was always really, let's say that properly, pissing off my teachers by always saying, what is it, this ki? What is it about? Do you know how we move this? And they told me, you know what, just train 10 more years and it will come. So from 10 years to 10 years, I was always asking, but nothing happened until I just, figure out that they didn't have a clue about what was key. And the first person who showed me properly this was Kawala Sensei mm. uh, when I was training in Shiatsu. But strangely enough, all the old master of Namikoshi school also. 
Um, as you know, they don't use meridians, they don't talk about that. But after so many years in treating people, they admit there is something. Yes. They won't admit it in public because <laughs> it's not the official official language of the school or official uh, discussion you can have with them. But in private, yes, they do very something. So everybody is connected with this. Um, after now more than 20 years of practice, I can say we have the same, in fact, in Western world. We have exactly the, the, the same. It's, um, in fact, um, the difference between Asia and Western countries is very simple about chi or key. We see it differently and from the scientific point of view. If you think about what is energy for us, it could be heat, thermic, en thermic energy. Is it correct in English, thermic? Thermal, thermal. Thermal, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thermal energy. Well, heat is an <laughs> energy and we use it for many things. Uh, moving trains yes yes yeah okay so heat is one energy if you think about it we have plenty of energy we have cinetic movement energy kinetic energy uh, yeah yeah but we are always moving like i'm doing yes. now so we have it too you can say we have chemical energy every time you are decomposing the food you're eating this is chemistry Every time you're doing some hormones inside, well, you put some little bricks together and create new molecules. This is chemistry. So mm. usually it produces a lot of heat. It's another kind of energy. You can think about atoms if you want. Um, you can think about what is, um, how can we call that? When you're sleeping and the next morning you feel okay. So you're recovering. It's what we call potential energy. Mm. The potential is full yes. again the next morning. So it's again, fine. It's an energy again. Um, if you put that all together, you have the same thing in China or in Japan. Well, especially in China. And it's, the difference is we cut it in different sections, in different science. But in fact, it's exactly the same. And for the Chinese, it's a whole. There is no differences. It's a whole Heat system. Is, yeah. yeah, it's a whole system. But you can add many things. Emotions are energy. When you're in love, you can run through the whole city until you find your, your lover. It's a fantastic energy. Uh, I don't know if you have faith in a religion. As we know, in, we say in, for Christian, Faith can lift mountains. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Lift yeah. your spirits. So, lift your spirits. Yeah. It, it lifts your spirits. It, it's the Shen energy. So, all this are energy. We call that differently in Western world. It's the whole same thing in Chinese world. That's it. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Well, uh, I'm I'm curious about Mr. Kawada. I had him as a guest and uh, is, you know, is an uh, incredible human being first of all artist and and teacher and therapist and it was a big influence on you and and many of uh, my guests uh, uh can you share some of your experiences uh you know uh, studying uh, studying with him and how he uh, helped and continues to help his students cultivate uh this philosophy of energy and and the ways of cultivating it yeah, I've got a few stories with him, but um, <clears throat> mainly what impressed me when I was his uh, student was uh, his ability to immediately spot what were, uh, were going on. Sometimes we were scared to just to shake his hand, you know, because immediately he would say, oh, how are you? And oh, you, you, you had an argument with your wife yesterday evening, right? And uh, you eat too much cheese because I feel your your plane is too low and it was always true and he, he was so good at that and uh, i think he's still very good at that because he had such a huge experience and it could also uh, make you feel what it was energy about by putting his fingers and just saying 
on a while on a one subo uh, point and after just maybe 10 seconds you can feel something tremendous inside mm. um is pressuring very hard uh, like the old japanese sensei used to do i think and it was quite uh, strong but you can feel there were two different things the mechanical pressure and then yes. something irradiating inside mm. and from any points you could uh, let's say of stomach meridian you can feel the whole line just lightning like 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 you know all these little lights on the christmas tree it was ding 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 like this it was just fantastic and also, he was calling me a lot because he said, when you're doing the technique with his, your elbow, I cannot feel your energy. I cannot feel it with your knee. You should, have, you should be able to uh, broadcast, let's say broadcast, I don't know how you say, to transmit. your energy. Transmit. Transmit yeah. through fingers, but also through arms, through uh, fists, through elbows, knees, and your feet too. And he was able to do that. And honestly, I'm not. I'm still not able to do that with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So it was really, really interesting. And the last thing I remember was the day because he is responsible of waking uh, waking me up to this sensation. And after maybe two years or three years with him, I remember he was sitting always at the same place in the in the classroom and just saying nothing mostly just everybody has an exercise to do he was watching and he looks at me and say oh this is for tonight mr bell i say what is for tonight <laughs> and, say, and so oh, it, no more and after a while for the very first time everything just overwhelmed me uh, just an incredible sensation and then in the coming days when I was trying to find this sensation again of course everything just was was far away from me and it took me six more years to find it again on a regular basis so it's that's my story so I'm not um, a pro energy I really enjoy also because my first school was Namikoshi school for three years in Paris before Kawada. Okay. And after Kawada, five more years in postgraduate school also in Namikoshi style. So I'm really also enjoying anatomy, uh, muscles, uh, joints, uh, tendons, whatever you want, and physiology now. Um, if you want to... Um, to be clear about what could be energy, well, you can call it like that, but you can also relate it to the body. Mm -hmm. And one of the most interesting, and you should invite him, uh, interesting person to talk about that from the physiological point of view is Dr. Daniel Keon. It's an English acupuncturist. Yes. Everybody say, yes, we've had. This guy is just fantastic. I really hope that next September I will be a student. I'm, I'm finishing reading his two books and it's just fantastic. He's able to say, okay, why the Chinese books say, uh, let's for example, uh, kidneys is controlling the growth of bones. There is no relation, okay? Even from an, the, the energy point of view, there is no relation, but from anatomy and from physiology, you have a lot of explanation. So I think both worlds are complementary. Com complementary Complementing each other, yeah. Yeah, the, the, that's the point and that's what is really interesting. You can use science or you can use your feelings, but in both cases, it's working. I get you, I get you. You know, you're also a big fan of... Uh and a student of the history of Shiatsu. And I know you created a Facebook group. Oh, can you, there you go. I can hear you. You also, um, you know, a student of the history of Shiatsu. And I, I know that you dedicated a, a website to it. And from a historical point of view, uh, you know, when it comes to Shiatsu, particularly the, 
what are the roots uh, to Shiasu that you discovered and, and their approach to energy cultivation? Um, it, it just, can you tell me again? Sorry, I didn't get Sure, it. sure. Like uh, the roots of Shiatsu came from uh, a more traditional therapy like anima. I remember mm -hmm. uh, one of my guests, uh, Billy Rituzio, talked about mm -hmm. anima and the different branches. Uh, and even back then, they, they broke, like you said, like a science, they broke it to different uh, departments, you know, the physical, uh, the emotional, the energetics, and even the spiritual. Uh, in, in your research to the history of Shiatsu and, and maybe even the, the roots to, to anima, what did you discover when it pertaining energy cultivation, the approach to energy work in Shiatsu? Well, I think that there is a gap between Anma, especially Koho Anma, and, and Shiatsu. Shiatsu is the moment where this Western civilization invaded completely all the fields of, um, or, of, or, all kind of arts, in fact, in Japan. Could, could be martial arts, could be uh, dance, could be uh, any kind of arts. And it was the same for all the layers of a society, you know, and especially after World War II. So the, already before with Meiji era, uh, but uh, after World War II, the, all these things had to change. Let, um, let's take just the example of karate. Before uh, World War II, usually the traditional karate was practiced open-handed, but it was too dangerous. And in fact, for being able to go on training when the Americans invaded the country, we had to do like this with a closed fist because it looks like box. And the Americans say, oh, this is just box. Okay, you can practice. So in order to have the authorization to practice any kind of arts, you needed to go through the American administration. So it changed everything. And already the Western science had a huge influence, especially on health, uh, in the health sector. And that was, at the same time, well, my point of view, that was a chance for the Asian people and also a disaster because they lost a lot of the ancient culture. A chance, especially for uh, about anatomy, when the European anatomy came, even with, with uh, I don't know, with the Hollandies or the Dutch, a long time ago in, in Japan, that was a revolution, mm -hmm. especially because no one was authorized to open the body just to check what, uh, how it was going on inside. So that's one thing. But the, for me, the gap is between the transition between Anma and Shiatsu. Because if you look at the first book, especially Tenpeki Tamai, it's completely, completely oriented with anatomy. Mm -hmm. And that's the beginning. And this book had a huge influence on all the, the over master after that, especially Namikoshi. Uh, on the martial art branch, especially from Hakoryu, as Billy used to say, or um, <clears throat> Gilles Adams last time, yes. or Joe Miller, Joe Miller also. Yes. They keep this ancient tradition and knowledge about meridians, points, because they use it a lot in their practice, I mean, the martial practice. Martial arts, to yeah. To harm someone, to make, to, to do some pain to someone. It's the same in different jujutsu, or you can see also that in some form of, of karate, or you can find also in ninjutsu. So all these martial arts, they are using tubo, but to make some harm, to, to, to create some pain. Um, and so it was okay to have this knowledge to also to use it to heal people because they are the real, really same points. It's just the difference is, is the way you're doing it. If you knock yes. it or if you pressure gently on it. So that's it. That's only that. So the martial arts branch keep all the traditional things Namikoshi didn't, was completely aligned with Tempeki Tamai, and Masunaga came back to the, to, to, to the roots and changed the system. 
So you have three main branches in Shiatsu. Yes. I mean, my guest, uh, and, and you watched the interview with Gil Adams, was uh, was very interesting. And and, and he did also uh, chi demonstrations where he mm -hmm. actually left left the room. Uh, if if, if any, anybody hasn't <clears throat> watched it yet, you have to watch this. It's it's on everything she had to YouTube channel. So just search that interview with Gil Adams. But but he did some incredible uh, chi uh, manipulation exercises. And I know you have something planned for us too to show us. Yeah, but before that, you have to remember that in the old Chinese book, this used to say, okay, uh, a bad practitioner or bad acupuncturist treats the body by putting needles in it. The good acupuncturist is staying close by, but he's not putting needles anymore. And the real master is using all these things, but he is not moving from his house. Is doing it at distance with distance. distance yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is that's in the in the old Chinese book. It's exactly interesting. That. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I, I will I show you. Yeah, please. I will show you. Yeah, a few things. Um, one more time. I'm I'm not someone who's saying this is chi, this is qi, this is just my experience. I don't explain it. Okay. And I'm not as good as Jill used to show last time. I have to touch someone. <laughs> so <laughs> for tonight, I invited one of my neighbors. He's a friend of mine Fantastic. now. He's a lawyer, young lawyer. He's quite strong, as you will see. And also is a um, is And a as a lawyer, he has to be skeptical. So He is skeptical, for sure. And he doesn't know what's going on tonight. So it will be a surprise for him. <laughs> So I took someone completely neutral. And you have to know I'm living in Bosnia, in Sarajevo, and there is no acupuncturist, no shiatsu practitioner, no uh, traditional Chinese medicine, as far as I know for now, but uh, we, we are going to ask him. So I'm yes. changing Please. my camera. Sure, sure. <laughs> Okay, so okay. here, you can, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, hello. So this is Atis. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. I'm Atis, uh, uh, a friend of Ivan's. Just be careful, don't hurt him, Ivan. <laughs> so, okay, the first exercise I will show you is just a simple one. I'm going to ask you to push against my chest and you will the same we are just put your arm against it one step slower and you push as long as you can okay you ready one two three of course he's stronger than me <laughs> he's much stronger than me i told you well wow, look he's bosnian you know it's not uh <laughs> you know they eat well in bosnia so you gotta be careful but Sorry, I can't hear you, Ivan. Yeah, the people here are not weak at all. They are very strong. No. It's a mountainous country, so they are strong. Eh? I know, Bosnians, you don't mess around. Yeah. So the thing I'm going to do is, as you know, on his hand, he got three young Marigans. And his side, three young Marigans. Let's go and see if I can disturb that. And the okay. first thing I found on the dumbbells is... A tissue. Okay. Oh, a tissue. You're going to use a tissue. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to use three of them. So I just roll the tissue like this. Okay. And let's put that in the middle, between his finger. Here, here, and there. Okay. Perfect. Let's do the exercise again. Let's do that. Interesting, very interesting. Okay. So immediately, immediately when I take it off. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So this is the first thing. It's just a trick that it's circus, but at, at least you can show the people, okay, there is something going on with that. 
How do you explain that? I don't. So by putting just some, you can use toilet paper if you want. Okay, that's it. Nothing compare if you put some magnets or if you put a cell phone. With cell phone is fantastic because the guy is just going back, sometimes falling because it's disturbing the whole system. So that's one thing. So maybe maybe it's a proof, one of many proof of the existence of key. Well, yeah. maybe maybe not. Okay, let's see now if this story of meridians does exist really. Okay. 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 Let's do another exercise. So, um, thank you. You're going to. Okay. Do like this. So yeah, yeah. So as you can see, the size of. Oh strong, my God! Man. Yeah, that's like uh, that's like two of mine. It's two of mine. Yeah, it two, can fit there. Two of mine. Yeah. So it's very strong. So I'm going to push down his fist as strong as I can. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, actually I'm 67 kilos. All right. Okay. <laughs> Here. Incredible. Incredible. Let, let's do it again. No, no, no. <laughs> no. He's resisting. He's resisting. Yeah. But as we know, here is using one meridian specifically. Is the largest. All right. Okay. So let's connect to some place in the largest in the interface. I'm going to use the last point here, just here like that. Uh, I'm pressing my finger. So. Just wait for two, three seconds. When I feel the meridian, you resist. You ready? Okay, go. Amazing. And I'm using only one arm, not my yeah. full. Got it. My full weight. So it's working. It means I've done a shortcut on this meridian. Like if you compare with electricity, I've done a shortcut. I took his energy here. And and you just uh, you just feeling for the energy, you're not doing anything else. Okay, just your mic for some reason. If you just come to the center more, I can hear you. Yes, it's there. Clear. You go. I, it's just That's my computer. Okay, so you just have to wait two, three, four seconds, and when you feel this little sensation in your fingers, you can start the exercise. Got it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to change the position of his fist. And use another another meridian, which will be which Heart, one? Love. Yeah. yeah. No, master of earth. Okay. Yeah. In the middle of the four arm. Let's do that. So like this. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. Uh, you cannot move him, okay? Impossible to move him. So I'm going to do exactly with the same point. So large intestine 20 on the nose. Here. All right. Across. But maybe it's not going to work. I don't know. Ready? <laughs> Obviously, it's not working. It's yes, not working yes. It's a distant meridian. So you can see immediately that there is something going on. I love it. All right. Now, let's take the first point of this meridian. As you know, it's close by the, the nipples here, right? Again. So I'm waiting for three. Oh, yeah, I got it. You're strong, right? Wow. Now it's working because that's hurt. Uh, I mean, master of hurt meridian, pericardium. <laughs> He's <Amazing>. touching now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you wow. see, we, with this kind of thing, we can do a lot of different tests, many, many different tests. It's so easy. And we can say, okay, and what happened if now, again, I'm using the large intestine, putting some pressure using pericardium one. But you cannot move again. Because it's not connected. It's not the same meridian. And you can do that and do, create your own test in, on every meridian, every time. It's working every time. 
Got it. So the next question, and it will be the last because I've got plenty of things like that. But the last one would be, okay, we tend to try to relieve pain in the people with, with their pain, you know, it could be joint pain or whatever. So let's do a um, technique from Aikido. You, do you know Aikido a little bit? No? Yes, yes, I've tried. Yeah, okay. I will use Nikyo. Nikyo is the second principle. So something like that. And you will see. It's quite painful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't get him upset, uh, Ivan. Right. No, no, I will try. So you see here, there is an angle, another angle. So from a mechanical point of view, it's easy for me to make to create pain. Yes. Okay, if I'm using my body behind that, it's worse. Mm. So it's going down immediately because the pain is there, but also going through the whole arm. All right, you got it? Yeah. Okay, if the meridians are working, we are going to use the one I'm disturbing is the heart meridian here. So what you're going to do is use the other Okay, now he just put gently his finger on the heart meridian, right? Let's do it again. Oh, interesting. <laughs> wow. It's not Amazing. moving because what he's doing is a shortcut again. Short, That's short cutting, yep, yeah. 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 So now he can resist, but the pain is still in his wrist, mm -hmm. but it's not anymore in the whole arm. So let's do something for me now. I want to overcome his resistance. All right? Okay. So, you know, I've got two feet. When I'm on my two feet, I've got 50% of my energy in, on one feet. And the, the uh, last, let's come here. You will look at my feet, okay? Or my legs. Yes. So here, two, 50, 50, okay? We got it. So he's protecting himself with the fingers here. Ready? I'm just going to lift this one or the, the other one. One, two, three. Wow. So now what I use is a redistribute. Can we say that? Yes, redistribute. Yeah, okay. The energy on one leg, so 100% on that leg. And of course, I choose the side of his wrist. So he's got pain now. Yeah. No. I, now you have to give him shiatsu after this. Yeah. So now he's going to try to overcome my own technique. So how can he go he do that? Uh, just think about it. We are using meridian disturb. We are disturbing the meridian now, especially the heart meridian. So we, he should take more power. Where can you find more power than inside a meridian? Inside a meridian? Where can you find more power? Power than a meridian. What is more powerful? Uh, than a meridian? Intention. It's intention could be, but extraordinary vessels. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask him to put his tongue in connection behind his teeth there. So in order to connect governor vessel with conception vessel. Got it. Okay, so let's try from the beginning again. One, you put his finger, huh? you put your tongue there, all right? One, two, three. And you feel no pain, yeah? You feel no pain. Okay, only a little bit in the wrist. So you see how this energetic system is working Yes. And it's working. And that's amazing because with this kind of thing, we can see a lot of pain and less and less pain by using different things, points, meridians, marvelous vessels, whatever it is. Great. Great demonstration. <laughs> okay, I'm coming much. back. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. So, I think we can Thank you for being the experiment. Yeah, make sure make sure it gives you a shiatsu after. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you can 
you can play all day long like this with this thing. And the question is, what is going on behind the scene? I mean, behind the muscles, behind the pain, it's exactly what the old ancient texts are saying. There is something more than just anatomy. But both are working together. You cannot be a human being without a brain. Uh, I mean, without a body, <laughs> a brain too. But, uh, you know, we have this um, philosopher in, in, in France, in our history, named Descartes. That's right. You heard? And he was saying, I'm thinking, so... Uh, I think, uh, therefore, I, I am. I think, uh, yes, therefore, thank you. I am. Yeah. But you cannot think if you're not. If you don't have a body, if you don't have a brain, you cannot think. So it's quite the opposite, in fact. So yes. here is the same. But for the whole people who are saying, no, there is no energy thing, okay? Or there is only anatomy and physiology. Why not? You can explain through this. But you can see there is some few things that is beyond uh, just anatomy and physiology. So that's why uh, I'm interested but uh, it's just, you know, it's just experience. It's just yes. fun also. This is fun. This is circus. It's not what we are doing, really. Of course not. Of course. Uh, no. But this is, this is a, a very tangible, you know, um, visual explanation, uh, you know, how things connect in the body. It's just really teaching our people that are not aware of this, you know, how everything connects, right? Uh and showing it mechanically like this, very physical, very visual. Uh, I mean, then there's no doubt. Then there's just curiosity after this, right? Fantastic. Oh, you know the story behind all these exercises. Once I went, I was in Belgium. I was invited by uh, doctors. It was a full day about uh, belly disorders, troubles, whatever it is. So the whole morning, it was specialist of this, of that. Even um, epidem epidemiologist. epidemiologist, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so very high-ranked doctors everywhere, and the last guy to to go to speak was me, with my blue Samway. Say, uh, yeah. and everybody <laughs> looks at me, and in front of me it was an amphitheater, so it yes. means three hundred people. Wow. All doctors or students Medical. in medicine, yeah. medicals, uh, physiotherapists, osteopaths too. So I was, I and mean, at the first uh, rank, the doctors in medicine. So it was not a lot of fun for me at that moment. So I told them, okay, I'm going to show you a few tricks like those one. I'm going to explain the same as I did tonight. Uh, about science and Chinese way of thinking uh, energy. And um, I was the only one when I stopped my demonstration with a stand, uh, how do you say, standing stand uh, ovation. Ovation. Stand ovation, yeah. And the doctors from the first rank came to me and shake my hand saying, thank you, thank you, because you are the very first one who is able to explain it simply and to demonstrate immediately what you're talking about. Absolutely. So I mean, after that, I was I was re a lot invited by different doctors here and there to to help them. Uh, somebody the here is asking uh, Ivan, uh, what are you visualizing when you do this? Are you visualizing anything or nothing? <laughs> okay, good. Nothing. Just pop, 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 and that's it. <laughs> and why would the endpoint weaken the tendi? Tendinomascular meridian. Sorry, sorry. Uh, why would the endpoint weaken the tendinomascular meridian? I guess in your demonstration, she's asking, uh, how does it weaken the meridian? Karen, do you want to ask it out loud? Sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm just um trying to understand why holding large intestine twenty would make the tendinomuscular meridian less. Um, resilient why would it weaken it in fact what uh, you if you think in terms of anatomy it's two mechanical forces who are opposing each other so the stronger will win it's exactly what happened at the beginning but in fact all your muscles they have they are 
alive and they receive uh, uh, something in continuous currents uh, that stimulates the, the nerves, that stimulates the cells also. So if you get rid or take this energy from that, well, your muscle is 30% to 50% weaker. So you're interrupting the connection? Is that what you're doing? No, no, because it's a, yes, I from that point of view, yes. But from the anatomical point of view, not at all. Because here, there is nothing connected with your arm, you know? So... But in terms of the meridian cycle, there is. Sure, so sure. Is that, you, is that you, what's you, happening? You're interrupting that connection? Yes, it's, as I said, I'm doing a, a shortcut and the energy is flowing in my arm, not in, in his arm. I see. Okay, hmm. thank you. Um, pleasure. That's a, that's, a, that's a very good question, Karen. Uh, Ivan, I want to talk about your book that you recently uh, put out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the spirit of shiatsu. Uh, how would you say it in French? Spirit. L'esprit. L'esprit du shiatsu. Eh? Okay, fantastic. So here I have, I have it here. So you have to know that is being translated in English now, and okay. soon in Italian too. So you you will be able to read it. I hope in one year and one year and a half, something like that. Fantastic. Um, and I want to have you back just talking about a book, but uh, because we have not a lot of time, can you just touch uh, touch on the book a little bit? Uh, I mean, obviously yeah, it's fact, the spirit of Shiatsu, but but what, what's the essence of it? The, the essence is talking about all the principles who are, uh, which are behind the scene, uh, as I say, behind the technique or supporting the technique. Because technique is really good, especially when you start. But after a while, if you don't understand the principle, how it works properly, you won't understand anything. So you, mm. you are just stuck on the, on the technique. And usually, if you're stuck on the technique, you say there is no, nothing more. But in, in fact, there is much more. So in all martial arts, the principles are well known. So the way you have to work, the way you have to turn, and you roll, and things like that but also the way you have to breathe and so on. So I put all this for Shiatsu in one book and it's divided in three different parts. The first one is all about technical mechanical principles. So it's not about freeze here, follow this meridian or do that or do this movement. It's, no, there is already plenty of books for that. And if you have a kata in your school, just follow the kata and you will learn a lot and repeat and repeat again. The kata is the basic form, and you have to practice it for your whole life, mainly. But here is explaining why this kata has been created like this. Why you should put your fingers like that and not with a double angles like this. If you do that, you're going to be hurted there. So all these things I'm explaining. The second part is about more philosophical and also energetic principles, how it works which are the different steps in a meeting with someone, uh, especially from the energy point of view. So what the Japanese call DI, DI is the meeting. So there is no, uh, is, can, can we do anything at any moment? No, we can't. There is a progression. Like when you open the door, you don't jump on the person and hug it and say, oh, I'm so happy you came. No, no, you cannot do that. So there is different distances you have to respect. And from time to time, the distance is going to shorten and shorten until you touch the person. And then you put more and more because it's over and then the person is leaving. So that's the thing. And the last uh, part of the book is about the seven laws of natural health. And one of the most important is nothing appears like that. There is no illness coming, bomb and falling on your shoulders. No, it's a process. So if you're able to understand how the process is coming and what are the little, little, little symptoms at the beginning, you can immediately stop the movement and you, you, you don't have any big symptoms. So it's really interesting to, to be able to do that. So that's the, the book mainly. And we can and find it on your website, uh, right? Which I'll it's post. It's on all Amazon, whatever. Uh, online library everywhere. Fantastic. So if you read French, you can do use it like this, but uh, otherwise you have to wait for the English version. 
Got it. And there's one in Ita <laughs> there's there's one in Italian too, right? Or yeah, you... with uh, Shiatsu Milano Editore, yes. Mm. Fantastic. Now I had uh, <clears throat> I had Mike Mandel uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he's such a great not only Shiatsu therapist and teacher, but a, a great thinker. Uh, and we talked a lot about you know the division the visions in in our shiatsu community over the years and how you know it's it's really important to put some of those divisions aside and come together just like they're doing right now in italy uh so i had the three presidents on a few weeks ago too um but we also talked about from his perspective he was saying how important it is to identify common principles to shiatsu so so it's not being in a way in his words diluted you know what mm. is shiatsu what is shiatsu you know and uh, are there any common principles can you can you speak to that because you just wrote a book about it about shiatsu and and uh, I'm, i'm so interested to well, hear your perspective uh, because you also there, there uh, is a, a, a few a common about principles so Quickly, if I take the table of contents, we will find some ideas, okay? Let me find it. All right. So first thing is uh, the pressure in Chatsu is perpendicular, all right? So that's one thing, but usually just that. It's a lot of troubles for a lot of person, especially when you're doing the back lines, uh, bladder meridians. Uh, recently, when I was in Italy, again, I showed to uh, two of my students, okay, you have to take a bottle like this. And you go all through the spine. And you will see it's not like this, but it's doing this movement because you have a shape like a wave. Curves, natural curves. So, yeah, curves. Okay, so if you want to be perpendicular here, you have to go this way, here, this way, here, that way, here, that way. So it's already, it's... It's not a nightmare, but you have to think about it properly. And just a bottle of plastic like this is a good tool to understand that. Um, you can also um, talk about stability. What does that mean? Is it just stability of your fingers? No, it's also stability of your hips, what you have inside your belly, your emotions, your mind. You, sh you have to work on all that. So it's a long process too. Otherwise, you at one point, you will start to shiver like this and it's not nice. <laughs> you can talk about what is principle of, um, let's say, rhythm. Because the rhythm. if you look yeah. at all those different styles of shiatsu, each style of shiatsu just grab one rhythm and it always do the same. So it's really interesting why they should do like this, why they in, try to connect with this rhythm, what this rhythm is creating in the body. Uh, if you have a martial arts, like uh, especially the Jigen Ryu, Jigen Ryu is less than a second. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you repeat one, two, like this. So with the whole body, of course, moving, but it's very fast. It's very fast. It could be light or deep with a pressure because pressure is another, the depth of pressure is another story. So mm -hmm. all this combined is our different principles. And you can go on like this again and again. Like we are talking about being centered. Okay, well, what does that mean? How can we be centered in our daily life, but also when we practice? How can we change that? So my student, I always do a lot of exercise of breathing, being calm, let the belly go <laughs> oh, and, uh, and relaxed. just relax. So you are heavier, your, your, your center is lower. So mm -hmm. you're heavier. It's very mm -hmm. difficult. But the way you're breathing also is different, is changing all this. If you're breathing, let's say here, you're very light. If you're breathing down, you're, you're stronger. So all these li little things, like we can also use the principle of working with two hands at the same time. At the beginning, uh, when I was a student, I used to work like this. <laughs> After a while, I figured out that someone, something was going wrong. 
I couldn't feel what I was doing. So the second hand was listening. Now it's better. Yeah, sure. I'm connected. Yeah, this kind of stuff. Um, also, we can talk about working without any strength. I mean, muscular strength. Because if you're doing that, immediately the person feels pain. Mm. So how can you move and do a lot of pressure without strength? Well, that's a principle. The way you're moving the hips, the way, the way you are connected between your belly and your two terms, you make a tri triangle with the shoulders and your terms, so this kind of thing. So there is plenty of answers in, in that book, in, that, in fact. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Ivan. Uh... Another thing I want to talk to you about, uh, and I've been asking that with all my guests, uh, you know, where, you know, we enter into this new paradigm globally, you know, on a macro level and a micro level, Shiatsu is going through a lot of changes. Uh, um, what what do you hope or where do you see Shiatsu? There is two answers to that. The first one, the basic one is in a world like we have now, right now. Well, Shiatsu is a complement, complementary technique and because we are not doing chemistry, so we are not medics. We are not doing surgery, so we are not surgeon. We are not doing dentistry, we are not dentist. We are not doing physiotherapy when you try to recover from a car accident or whatever. We are not doing that also. So we have something special for us, a special place, working with all the other sectors of health. And so that's my point of view. We have a plain role to do in this global world of health. And, you know, we are talking, especially in, in your countries, in the American, I mean, English speaking countries, we are distinguishing uh, care and cure. So we are not doing cure, we are doing care. So we have a lot of space here to help people. Mm. But the thing is, the world is not stable anymore. <laughs> Everything is collapsing. Uh, maybe you've noticed recently, uh, I don't know, this uh, hurricane in Mozambique, Madagascar, named Freddy. For the very first time, a hurricane came to the coast, went on the, on the ground, and went back in the ocean, and came again a second time mm. on the coast. That's it never happened before, never. So it's a monster and it killed many people. It destroyed many things. Just in Malawi, where I come from, it's a hundred people dying mm. and 500,000 without, without any house, anything. No. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's a disaster. This kind of thing happens more and more. If you look at the river close to your home, the river are very low and we are just coming out from winter and now it's spring. And here in Europe, all the rivers are very low, but that's the same in China. The Changjiang, the big uh, river, I mean, the big, uh, how do you say, um, not river, but the fleuve. Um, okay. Lake. No, it's not like when, when it's a big river, it's a large river. How do you call that? Uh, we have just rivers for words. Okay, yeah. you have just river. We have two yeah. different words for that. The okay. French have a lot of words. <laughs> all right. So, the Changjiang, which is the, one of the biggest river of the world, is nearly dry, and its spring should be completely full. So everybody is re really worried, and you will see in summer it will be a nightmare for uh, half of the population, world population. So everything is changing quickly. Like if you talk about energy again, but fuel, uh, gas. Of course, you have the war against Ukraine and with the Russians and so on, but the, 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 the different uh, num tones of production, it's now decreasing. For petrol, the world maximum were in 2015 and the gas 2018. So it means we are going to have less and less petrol, but our whole economy our daily life, what we're using now to look at each other. It's a computer, it's a camera, it's a lot of plastic, metals, and uh, rare products, uh, rare soils, rare, rare uh, metals. Metals. So yeah. 
yeah, at least 20 different ones in, in a camera. So the, the pullover here or my t-shirt is made out of plastic because the fibers are coming from that. When my, my bottle is plastic, okay, and the, the lamp and so on. So if you think about that, we are going to have a lot of troubles in the 10, 15 coming years. And I'm, I'm not saying that because I'm a collapsologist or whatever. Yes, I'm yes, just yes. taking the numbers of tons of productions. And we have a lot of clever people here in France talking about that. They are all scientists, all engineers. So the result will be what? A complete change in our society, the way we're living. And they all say we are going to be in between, let's say, 17th century and nowadays, somewhere in between. But transition, we're not sure we will have a transition. So, okay, let's go back in time and think just a little bit. If we are going back to 17th century, can we still do medicine like we're doing with a lot of medic medication? No, because it's coming from our industry. Our industry need electricity, need fuel, and so on. And chemistry is all about that. So this year, for the last year, I mean, for the very first time, we were lacking of medicines in Europe. Yeah, very yeah, first yeah, time yeah. since the, <laughs> the, the end of the Second World War. North America too, yes. Okay, this is an, a big signal, okay? So if you are not autonomous, like knowing the plants, knowing osteopathy, knowing how to do, uh, you know, when you broke your arm to, to yeah. put things. Uh, the bones, know, yeah. Yeah, and knowing how to, and, uh, to, to, to release the body, to make this energy flow and help the digestive system, the nervous system. Well, you're going to die. <laughs> so in that world, we have a lot to play, more than to nowadays. In that coming world, we will be, if we go on training in different things, in different uh, specialties, we, we can do a lot because we won't have anything to help us. We won't have surgery anymore. If you want to try uh, to do surgery without electricity in pitch black, you cannot. If you do it with candles, well, it's going to be quite complicated to see what's going on inside. Or maybe you will pour some uh, wax. <laughs> Imagine I'm a surgeon, I'm cutting. Oh, sorry, I don't see anything. But it's going to be really complicated. So the future for health sectors will be our, if we survive, in fact. If we, have, if we are autonomous with food, with shelters, with clothes, and for our own security also. But if we manage to do that, if we are preparing nowadays for the coming future, and this future is coming very fast, well, we will be able to be the health of tomorrow, I guess. I, I think so. That's my conclusion. Well said. Well, everybody get ready. <laughs> <laughs> but please do not stuck only with shit to go and learn everything you can everything you can but but i also would like to add that uh, before we transition to 17th century <laughs> and we don't know nobody knows how it's gonna go nobody but, knows but, yeah uh i i really believe that she had some therapy uh, and i want to put a megaphone on it i really believe it's more suited to today than ever before you know, people are really looking for for shiatsu. They don't even know that they're looking for shiatsu. They're just looking uh, to feel uh, all all those principles that you mentioned in your book, uh, uh, Ivan. That's what they're looking for. You know, they're looking for balance and stability. You know, and they're looking for that kind of touch uh, that helps them release. And uh, they're looking for shiatsu. They just don't know. And uh, <laughs> we as shiatsu therapists, you know, are, are more suited, you know, to help people in, in a complex time, you know, more complex than ever, than, than ever before. That's, that's my belief. Okay. So, that's my uh, belief too. <laughs> yes. Uh, anybody here uh, that is joining us on Zoom would like to add to the conversation, ask questions. 
from Ivan or, or just uh, any comments? Marta, you know me, you can ask something. <laughs> I was going to click on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. It's so a pleasure to see you, Ivan. Me like too, I feel uh, we we met uh, shortly in 2017 when we went to the uh, European Shiatsu Congress in Vienna. Mm. And uh, we have uh, talked a little bit um, by emails and I think it was like a phone uh, uh, um, phone call that we did because you helped mm -hmm. me a lot with uh, some research I was doing about Shiatsu. But right. I really feel like we are close friends and I am, my heart is like beating fast because I met you again. Even if this is not a real meeting, uh, it's a tech, technic, technic meeting, <laughs> technological meeting. Technological but, meeting, yeah. Yeah, it's so good to hear you. I really mm -hmm. like uh, your energy, your way you teach. And uh, I hope that we can soon bring you to Montreal. Okay, so I've got a little announcement uh, to, to say. Um, there is a surprise coming from ESF, but I'm authorized to say, to talk about it. Okay, so, exclusive here on the exclusive podcast. Exclusive now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know this uh, website named uh, Shiatsu Resources, all right? Yes, yes. Where Philippe van der Leben is promoting old books, things like that. Okay, it's, it's been a, a year now I'm working on a open library with all the books online. So it's not the, the content of the books, of course, but we, you will have all the title. It's already in 10 different languages. And we are adding Hebrew, Greek, the other um, alphabets now, a Russian That's soon. And fantastic. at one point, I hope I will be able to collect all the books of the world I'm not sure for Japanese because we got so many. <laughs> like when I Google the number of shiatsu books in Japanese, there is nearly 2,000. So it's wow. a lot. But now there is already seven hundreds of books in this library. So it's very interesting. And if you're looking for one title or another, you in a language, or if you're looking for uh, an author and you want all the books of this author, like, let's say Chris McAllister, and you, you just type on it and immediately you have all the books. So it's, Fantastic. it's going to, That's a great, it's going great to be initiative. very yeah. useful. Yeah. Yeah. Great initiative. Uh, and How so many easy. books we will see from you in that site? Uh, just just in one. 10 years. <laughs> in 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> it's too much work, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, uh, Karen. Karen, Speaking go ahead. Of books. Um, Early on in the this um this meeting, you said that um one of the old or the old Chinese books says uh, that um the superior physician um, practices without leaving his house. Can you give us a reference for that or like? Uh, right now, no. Uh, but I re re read that. Uh, huh. uh, let me look for you. Uh, Okay, and I will send it to Michael, but we'll send it to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Fantastic. Fantastic. How are you, Go. Fernanda? I, I think I read something like, uh, likewise, I think it was in the Nagin, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it was no, the Nagin or the so. Shahal Lul. So, but I'm not sure. That. I'm not sure. Maybe it's in a, another book. Fernanda. Hi, Ivan. How are you? Nice to see you. Me, me too, me too. Okay. So, and and uh, we got Serena who uh, also hosted and, you in Vil in Milano is that right Yes uh, exactly so Italy is there too Roberto Hi. and Serena Hi Hi Michel Hi Hi, Hi Serena Hi, Hi. we was so nice to have uh, uh um Ivan in Milano uh last week was very nice. We enjoy a special, very special seminar. So uh, we hope he come back again. And next one, it could be Michael from Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. I would go love ahead. to. Yes. Would yeah, yeah, yeah. To. And and I will go. I will go to his practice. Meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> we do an exchange. Yeah, we do an exchange. Yeah, yeah it's that's what we need to, to do. Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> we have to come to Lisbon, Ivan. <laughs> yes, okay. Ex exchange uh, exchange program. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Well, uh, Ivan and uh, the guests here, thank you so much, Ivan. It was so much fun. Oh. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you for all your work. I know your work, and and thank you for the assistant. Maybe say something. Thank you. Well, uh, say something. I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yeah, it was we a can pleasure hear. Working, it was a pleasure working with Yvonne. I uh, actually, um, I didn't uh, ever experience anything like this before. And it was, um, it was a wake up call. It was really interesting. And good. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. Because I know Serbians, you know, they're not easy to convince. <laughs> Well, no, the next step will be to open a school. Maybe he will join me, and we never know. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you again, Ivan, uh, for My your pleasure. demonstrations. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. You know, uh, great demonstrations, great work, and uh, we'll put up your website so you can uh, get his book, those that can read in French and Italian, and soon in yeah. English. Soon in English. Have thank a nice evening or day. You too. Thank you, you Bye-bye. Hope to see you soon.